So how are we going to represent that in a theory? Well, let's start by the simple case. So we are going to simplify, right? So we are considered that we have one elastic branch, which is that. And then instead of that, that being a curve, imagine that we have represented that. That could be com com made more complex by a single straight branch, incremental branch. So we are representing the complexity of all this with just a branch which has a different elasticity than the or different slope than the beginning. Okay. So we want that in the elastic branch, when we are below the elastic limit, the be material behaves elastically in loading and loading. So pro complete recovery of the path, complete, complete uh, reversibility. Then beyond sigma e, we consider that we have an elasto elastoplastic branch with another slope that we call e elastoplastic. This is e. Plastic. This is E elastoplastic, okay? which will be part of our material properties. Now we have identified as a material properties E, as a material property the elastic limit, and as a material property also the, this E elastoplastic tangent, tangent uh, modulus. Okay? And you want also to represent that if we pursued a stress state like that, and at a certain point we want to release the stresses, we want to represent the fact that we are not going back to that way. We are going just in that way. This branch that is very parallel to that one in a slope. So the slope of that is nothing new with that. So the material in this elastic branch incrementally, incrementally is working elastically. Okay? And of course, while we are in this branch here, then the process is reversible. So if you load and load, we are moving to the same branch. But when we are here, if we want to go a little beyond, beyond the maximum stresses that the material had achieved in the past, that is the flow stress that I said before, that flow stress, the material is not following the elastic limit anymore. Uh, the elastic behavior anymore. It's going to restart of if it had some memory, the plastic behavior that it had. Okay? So we want that after that, the material finishes the incrementally elastic behavior and then recovers, re retakes the elastoplastic behavior. That is the maximum. The, the, the complexity of what we are intending to do, okay? And we want to do that through a mathematical model. So, set of algebraic and differential equations with some properties, and then, that's why it could look too much complex, then we, are going, we want to do that in a context that can be then generalized almost immediately to 2D to or 3D cases, okay? So let's consider now the ingredients of the theory. Okay? First, the decomposition of the strain into the elastic and plastic counterpart. We are considering that the strain will be always decomposable or decomposed into an elastic counterpart and a plastic counterpart. The elastic counterpart is going to be always sigma the stress divided by epsilon. Okay? is what we had here, right? So, so if we had here the stress, uh, sorry, sorry, that, that is in, 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 that, in that branch here, right? That's here. But then, then we are going to consider that incrementally. So any increment of a strain is equal to an increment of elastic strain and plus an increment of plastic strain. D by differential, I mean a small increment, right? I'm just using differentials to, to represent infinitesimal increments. And how is that defined? Well, the increment of epsilon and the increment of stress are related typically as inelasticity. Increment of stress equal E increment of epsilon. That's what we have here. So here, the increment of stress is the, young, the, the slope, which is the, the, the young modulus, times the increment of strains. Here and there, incrementally, that is valid everywhere. 
every increment of stress is related to the corresponding increment of strains through the young elastic modulus. Okay? That's the way that we mathematically define the increment of elastic strain. And the remaining of the strain is plastic. Okay? The remaining of the strain is plastic. Okay. That is the first ingredient. Second, a second ingredient now is just if you are preparing a chemical uh, mixture and you take ingredients, right? You take that, you take that, you take that, you take that, and now we are using all them to define the mixture, right? So the first ing ingredient is the, the composition of the strains. Second ingredient, we define something that's going to be useful, which is called the hardening variable. What is hardening? Hardening, you know the word hardening? is endurement, eh? endurecimiento. So it measures, so to speak, how much the material increases the strength, so hardens, in plastic regime. What does that mean? What do I mean hardening? Look, if that slope, if that slope was flat, was flat, uh, imagine that, that, that this is zero, right? That the slope was flat. What would be the maximum strength that can be achieved by the material? Sigma E, right? But if it is not flat, every, this is what is called hardening. So, in general, the material has a capacity to increase its strength, its strength beyond the elastic domain. Okay? That is hardening. Okay? So, if the material is like that, we have, if, if that, that branch increases, is what we call that's hardening. Okay? If it was just horizontal, horizontal, we will go, go back to that. We call that there is no hardening. Okay? Okay, so related to that, we define a variable which is in a scalar, which is defined the hardening variable. Okay? And it's defined that way. I mean, that could be just a duck, but then we'll see how it defines what we look for. Okay? So the increment of alpha of this variable is the sign of the stresses times the increment of plastic strain. By the way, what is the function sign? The function sign of, a fi of x, of a, the sign of something, is 1 if this something is positive, and minus 1 if this something is negative. So we see this. That's what the sign. So differential of us also is plus the plastic incremental, the incremental of alpha is the incremental of plastic strain if sigma is positive, and if sigma is negative, the incremental of alpha is minus the incremental of plastic strain. Okay? That's what it means. Depending on co in, in tension, incremental of alpha is incremental of plastic strain and coincides with the incremental of plastic strains, and in compression, it's minus the incremental of plastic strain. Okay. On top of that, we are going to require that this variable is always positive, which, of course, brings you to mind that we are obliging with that that the, plastic, the increment of plastic strains in compression is going to be negative, because if that is positive and this is negative in compression, that is going to be negative. Okay? That's what means the extension to that to the upper branch. When you are in compression, when you are in compression, in the corresponding un uh, uh, unloading branch here, the increment of plastic strains are negative because we are moving in that way, in terms of the plastic strains. That is what is modeled here. Okay. Then this allows some interpretation, as I've just told you, about this, uh, the, 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 uh, this variable, hardening variable. If the stresses are positive in a tensile process, increment of alpha is equal to increment of plastic strains, so finally we can say that alpha is equal to the plastic strain in compression. Okay? If the process was all the time in tension, in, in compression, sorry, I said that the, the compression is in, te, in tension, the increment of the alpha is equal to the total plastic strain. And in compression, in compression, since increment of alpha is minus, sine of sigma is minus 1, the increment of plastic strain, then alpha is minus the plastic strain. Alpha is a positive num number that in monotonic tensile processes, 
corresponds to the plastic strain. In monotonic compressive processes, corresponds to minus the plastic strain. And in processes that is, there are part which is intensile and part that is incompressive, then it's something in between, that we cannot say. Okay? But this is what we define through that equation and that condition, the value of the hardening variable, which, by the way, it's a function of the plastic strain, but being zero when the plastic strain is zero. It starts for a virgin material, the plastic strain is zero, and alpha is zero. Okay?